Two things could happen. It just gets high miles and it just keeps running and everything is good or it goes into a wall. You just got to start the car. It doesn't run. <sighs> All right, this video is gonna start out with a little bit of uh, hesitation on my part because I don't actually know if I'm making the right choice. If you guys look behind me, you can see where I'm at. Uh, in the past couple of videos, I've been hanging out with my boys at DDE and uh, it feels great to be in a relationship with these guys again. And it feels really good to be back to kind of like the early days, the normal between me and Damon and Dave all doing some cool stuff. They were at the office a couple of weeks ago and they said, hey, why don't we go back to 2017, but let's take it up a notch. Let's give you a car that was once ours, right? Now I would have to buy that car because obviously everybody needs to make it all work. And I would rent that car and basically build this new type of immersive experience, something that you guys in the audience could essentially come and live the actual moments behind the wheel of Damon's personal DDE Huracan. At first it was like, yeah, of course, why not do that? It makes sense. And then I got to think about it. Okay, what are the repercussions of this? You know, how much is this car gonna cost me? Is it worth it? What happens when it breaks? If anybody crashes it, is there any liabilities? And I went through all the little details and I've come to the conclusion that this is possible. And so I flew out here. Uh, I've got the family in the, in the office over here and I'm here to make a decision. We're here at the DDE headquarters. Let's go in, let's take a look around. The car's here, let's sit in this and let's get off of the uh, emotional high that uh, we were in that moment driving the car up and down the street, ripping it with the handbrake and let's think about the business. This door's locked so I don't know what to do. All right. Hey dude, it's not safe out here. It's comfortable, get in. I don't. All right, Dave's here. What's up guys? Damon's not. Damon's at home. I didn't want Damon to be here because Damon's the one that gets me all riled up. Oh, let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Dave's like, he's business. Damon and I are very yin and yang, which is good. Damon's also business when it has some reflection, but in the moment he's like, let's do it. And I'm like, well, I'm always like the walker. Like. <laughs> and, and you need that. And sometimes I'm wrong, sometimes he's wrong, but it always seems to work out in the end. Well, we're here because we want to make this work and I think it's a good idea. I, you think it's a good idea. And so let's just wrap our I heads around I know it's this. a good idea. Yeah. Vegas is so fun. The audience needs an escape from their lives. Come to Vegas, and another reason. The wife wants to go see a concert. Mm -hmm. the wife wants to go for dinner. The husband, in most cases, wants to drive a supercar. But I think it's gonna be a really cool experience. Also, I don't know if you told him yet, it's not just coming to get the car. We're gonna be in Vegas so much more, doing events with Houston, things like that. And Dave and I both personally love Vegas. Great restaurants, great hotels. Maybe we do an experience where we have like a hotel we partner with. So you get like a whole package deal. You come, you set a nice hotel, maybe do a little DD theme at some level, get the car, create drives, do little rallies. This is what we thought about in 2017. It was. And then we, we kind of like, see what happened was is, we both got big. I'm making a little bit of weight. I'm losing it now. Yeah. <laughs> we both got very, uh, uh, we, we, we started to Hello. get successful. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. You can't do that shit in Compton. There's speed bumps along the way, but if you're the right person, you have a good person and a good heart, you always find your path and we found our path. So essentially the, the plan here is to figure out how this benefits the people behind the camera more than it benefits DDE and royalty. Correct. Okay. So right now we have the opportunity to make something immersive. That's the word I've been using, yep. immersive, right? With this car right here. And I think it makes the most sense. This is too much. I think this is too race car. But this car here, I think is the perfect balance of the ability to experience something that's like eight tenths of that with the look, the feel, the sound, but with the ability to actually make this streetable and yep. usable. Yep. Most of the people that rent from me, this is the first time supercar experience. So you just can't give them the keys to anything. The good news is the Huracan is super easy to drive. And some say they're boring for that reason. The people that are hardcore, like the Murcielago guys, mm -hmm. but that's good. It's like an Audi product. So like the MMI is really easy. The transmission is really easy. The car drives like a normal Has car. air conditioning. Has, yeah, has everything you need to be normal. The only challenge is to be obviously it's low to the ground. This is two inches off the ground and this is like four. And this has lift still, right? No. Oh shit, see? This is how we get discounts. Has the Olin <laughs> suspension, so there's no lift. But you know what? 
we could always throw the lift back in if we wanted to. Do you have all the stock parts? Oh. More discounts. Body we don't have because <laughs> this kit is to cut the body. So off. this is the factory body. This is the factory race car body. No, but it's like the factory body too. Like you had to cut it and, and, and make it all work, right? Oh yeah, no. So this was like thirty thousand dollars in labor in the end. We had one person install it, about fifteen grand, and then another shop had to take what they did and make it better and a lot of custom brackets and whatnot. Michael Essa helped. It is the only one that has a functional roof scoop. And can you explain where this roof scoop feeds the air? Can it's we take this off? Take, uh, this just pops off right here, right? Like, how am I going to service this, Dave? Sounds like a you problem, Houston. Ah, you may be right. Oh, I can see why it's functional now. See, this is sick. So Via helped engineer this with us. So we obviously had this built. Like so why did they make it in carbon? Where's Mike? Tell him it's supposed to be carbon fiber. It's carbon fiber and it's painted in plastic. I know, but it should be painted in carbon fiber too. We can do the upgrade for you if you want for 25 grand. I'll take it, add that on so the check. So Naked VF ran this and actually tuned it with the intake so it's properly done Sick. with a supercharger. And then we did the custom exhaust, like the race car, wrapped it in Inconel, get that look. I love, I love the exhaust on this car. Although it, it, it is extremely loud, it's pretty dope. It's a bit loud. <sighs> yeah, but it's like, it's cool. It's like super cool. If people come and rent this car, like this is the only rental company on the planet to get this level of experience. Right. Royalty in Las Vegas. I'm gonna remind everybody, because there's probably new people since I started this, but I started royalty by accident. I was renting scooters and stuff. I just wanted to pay for my car habit. And uh, you know, I had a job and it didn't work out. And it, it is what it is, whatever. So I started this company, but I always was a car guy. Always, always, always. And that's what essentially built royalty to the best in the world because I rented the craziest, coolest car, but I didn't buy a Lamborghini with silver wheels. You know, I started Iconosys the wheel manufacturing company that I have, and I made all one-offs, cool custom wheels for every single one of my rental cars. I got everything just super dialed in to where when you're renting this car, obviously it doesn't look like a rental car. We know that this one doesn't look like a rental car. Like you're gonna roll up in the valet and be like, uh, sir, where did you drive this from? The racetrack? The racetrack. Okay. All right, so we talked about this and I think this is so sick. And I called all the Lamborghini engineers I know. How many is that? One. <laughs> <laughs> a billion. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna have both. So we're gonna upgrade this car to be the only Huracan in the world that has a paddle shifter and a little shifter thingy like this. And I get why, because this is, if, you, if you've never driven the car, it has an element that your brain has a hard time doing well, both. And you might actually downshift one time. It's kind of like Tiptronic from Porsche. Yeah, yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm not opposed to that. And then handbrake, we're gonna get rid of that? Yeah, yeah. We'll get rid of the handbrake. It's unnecessary. So it started, it's just, you just gotta start the car. It doesn't run. Oh shit. Can you imagine? Here. <sighs> start it. Okay. Automatically way too loud. This is a very bad idea. We're definitely putting stock exhaust back on this thing. Okay, let's break the numbers down. I buy this car and it is more expensive than a stock Huracan. Correct. Now, it's really not worth more than a stock Huracan in my opinion. I'm technically like the mind of a car dealer because I have to sell these cars eventually. Yeah, you know, this, this car, value, I get it. this car I will probably own forever because well, two things could happen. It just gets high miles and it just keeps running and everything is good or it goes into a wall where it's financially irresponsible to fix it. Because if it's light damage, we just keep but buying parts. But if somebody parts. did that, their insurance takes care of it. Absolutely. But is there a guaranteed value you can create when someone rents this car? Well, what we do is, is we get a third party appraiser for all of our special cars, right? So I had an accident on a brand new 720. This is four years ago when their 720S or Spiders came out. And there was no value because none of them had sold because that was when the market was appreciated, right? You, you get a McLaren, you get a Lambo, it didn't matter, it was worth more. So we had a company come out and appraise it, we had three appraisals, no big deal. This has marketing value. So the appraised value of this car is far greater than the VIN number's value. Correct. Right? And that's why I'm open to the idea of losing so much money on this car if I ever had to sell it for the value of the VIN number. Now the original Tire Slayer, that car, you don't have to tell me what you sold it for, but 
did you sell it for more than you anticipated selling it for or oh, less? Yeah. More. Right? Yeah. More. So there is people out there, people like you guys watching the video, people like in, in, uh, Dave's audience and Damon's audience that want to have a car like this because it's it's kind of like owning the car from a movie. For sure. Like, think about uh, Ken's unicorn. Oh, it's, it's, well, if it wasn't Ken's, what's that car worth? Not, nothing. If it's Ken's, what's it worth? An unbelievable. Millions. Just, the number is hot. It's a car you have to auction. And I'm not saying that, I'm not comparing the two as being like for like, but the idea behind it is, yeah, it's like a movie car's worth more because of what? Like Paul Walker's R34 is worth what because of what? So it's like, there's the assessed value of the VIN number, but then there's the assessed value of, of the, the pedigree and the story. Yeah. This car has been on the channel for a lot of time. Four years, right? Three years? Three years. Plus also, the livery was designed by Ken's actual Design, uh, designer. Yeah. And then the actual uh, bronze on here right now was from the last roll that had left, I guess they stopped making it, uh, used on Ken's car. So it's the actual same vinyl from Ken's car. Then Hoonigan gave their blessing on this and we did a little collab with them. And they allowed us to do this in Ken's honor. We wanted to honor Ken and Ken inspired Damon to start DD. Like I, when Damon met Ken, I'd never seen Damon be like, not stargate, but like Damon was like, you could see Damon was like, this is a big deal. And when Ken passed away, I hit Damon really hard. And the weird thing is like, this is Ken's building. Like Ken used to drive his car around the block. So Ken cool. used to spin around. That's why we named it the block. So you got obviously the DD fans and you have the Hoonigan fans that can connect with that level of it. So I feel there's a lot of you at home that are really going to enjoy this and will come to Vegas just for this. Because Vegas is great. Flights can be cheap. There's lots of great hotels. Vegas is investing in more buildings. You've got more sports, more concerts, severe, all these cool things. F1's there. Yeah, I mean, look, at the end of the day, like we're not making a bad choice on this. We're just trying to figure out- I'm making out. a great choice. He's it, financially I'm cool. oh, yeah. doing great. Uh, well, actually, I'll, I'll push back saying like, this car title thumbnail gets views. So the car makes us money as far as like, Add revenue. The car at least is cheap on this thing. We only paid whatever we paid for at the time, Canadian. And it's probably, yeah, it was probably like a $200,000 car. Yeah, I don't remember, but it was a DD fan that had it. It was bone stock. He had it since new. Babied the car. Dealer service records, and we get it. And they're gonna cut the body off and do all this stuff on it. I love it. That's my car. So it's got guy. a cool pedigree behind it. But this car generates a lot of revenue for us. Damon didn't want to sell it. If you didn't buy it, this car was not getting sold. This is more repurposing the car, yeah. right? Because this car lives within the organization, right? Correct. Because I'm like an auxiliary product to DDE, yeah. right? You know, I've been there for eight years, two on a hiatus and uh, the other six. Like a furlough. Yeah, we did a furlough a little bit, but uh, this is in the ecosystem. This allows for DDE to now kind of like branch out and have a home base in Vegas, yeah. which they've always had. I mean, they're family to me. So it's like, it's a, it's a very unique thing because both me and Damon, did really well from each other's uh, hard work back in 16, 17, 18, when we first met, right? We, we all three did, we really worked our ass off. We we're making videos all the time. We we're doing a great job and uh, it was really fun. So I want to pay homage to that and I want to respect the growth and royalty and, and everything. And I think Damon wants to return the favor and we all are going to make this new chapter in uh, the two of our companies, right? And uh, I think it's going to be really good because this is going to lead to another build. Yeah, that's that's the idea is this is just step one in a, in a mm -hmm. relationship. And we've talked about some crazy ideas, like what if we bought some Airbnb properties and had DD themed uh, rentals in Vegas. So you kind yeah. of stay at the DD house, car themed, get the car. Like, there's lots to that, but like anything, step one is we take this car, rent it out, and we say you guys respond. If it responds really well, we're gonna build more. Next thing you know, all of a sudden there's 3,000 DD cars in Vegas and all you see is DD Hurricane <laughs> everywhere. You can't even get around. The goal here for the two of us is to create a business model that cannot be replicated, right? Because as we go into a challenging economy, right? We have lower ad rates on YouTube. We have less yeah. sponsorship. We have more expense. And the only way in my mind, the only way to survive a poor economy is to work together. Right, because as individuals, we are not as strong as we are working on the same project. Toothpicks. You give us toothpicks together, and you can't break it. Of course. Plus, Vegas is really fun. So there's a selfish part of me that wants to go to Vegas more often. Yeah, and it, I so think it's, everybody wins. I have one more vehicle I want to show you. Maybe this is a really dumb idea. Can we That's just stop here one quick second? Yeah, do your thing. Okay. I noticed that this here is carbon fiber, so we'll just do a quick swap because no one cares, right? What is carbon fiber? Holy it's the same box. Shit. Just, just do a little swap a roof. The person rented the car, they're like, I don't want it, it's not carbon fiber. You can't even see it. I know it's not carbon. Tell you what, we can wrap it in carbon. That's the LA style thing to do. Carbon dipped. All right, 
let's say we just make this deal happen. When could the DDE car potentially be available to rent? It is basically August 1st, yeah. right? So yeah. what are we looking at? So what has to happen because it's a Canadian car has to go back across the border. I, we went through this process yeah. with the yellow DDE car. The yeah, Mercy. It's the same process. Same process. I'll have to clear the bond to get back into Canada. Okay. By the way, we do everything on the up and up. Like, it, because we're on the internet. You can't be like, oh, I just did that. No, it's like, declare everything. Every modification is declared the border. So we'll pay some taxes on our end. And then you'll basically, through August, they'll handle the export of it. A week to get to the border. A couple days of the paperwork. It's quick. And then we have to get shipping from the border to Vegas. So it's a finance shipper for that. Yeah, Carlos will take it. Two weeks. Once you get the car to Vegas, how long until people can rent it? Uh, I would make it a priority, right? So I'm thinking like it could be in the rental fleet. Like let's say first of September, like yeah. one month from now, I can start pre-booking that car. We'll go through and figure out what parts we have to make sure like anything else slips over. It doesn't have the lift, so you might want to add the lift. We're gonna get the car ready to go. Everything that's factory for the car, put it in the box. We're gonna make it work. All right, let's buy this car. Let's get it done. Deal. He bought the car, he's paid for it. I just, see ya. All right, dude. Well, thank you. Bye.